So how do you shoot and edit these super cool wide background photos? Well, let's find out together. What's up everyone? If you don't know me, my name is Simone and I'm a professional photo videographer. And in this channel, we explore strategies and tools to improve our photography, business and productivity. And in this video, I want to explore with you how to shoot and edit this super cool white background photo. We're gonna do it in two ways. First one, without having, without really needing expensive gear. And the second one with expensive gear, which is a much faster and easier way to do it. But let's start with the first one. So as you can see from this behind the scenes, the only thing that you really need are trunk light and any type of white background. In this case, I was using just a bed sheet and two very cheap Amazon light on the site. Plus, if you have any other type of light like neon or that you find at home or maybe LID that you can put there and use as secondary light, that will be great. If you don't have a very strong light, the key is to have that source very close to your subject. In that way, the light will be much stronger because for small lights, for example, like this one that I have here, the closer I have, the stronger it is. And as soon as I move it further away, like a meter further away, it's gonna be like half or even one quarter of the strength than compared where I have it very close. Now, the problem with this is that many times this is not enough. The light is just not enough and therefore we have to fix it in post-production. Keep in mind that everything that you need or maybe two, one or two softbox from Amazon, they're very, very cheap and you can find them literally anywhere and actually they make a huge difference. So if you have any kind of budget you want to invest, these are actually amazing and I always sponsor them before moving to the next step, which is buying professional lighting. And yes, in this video, I was just in my house. Go in your bedroom, find any bed sheet that is white and try to hang it on the roof on top. Another way could be using just the window. When there is a sunny or when it's cloudy but it's bright, then you can stay very close to the window with the bed sheet and you're gonna create the same effect anyway. So these are the original photo shot with these two Amazon lights and the bed sheet but there is a problem, right? They're not really white. So how can we fix it in post? And now I'm gonna show you using Lightroom Desktop, but if you have Lightroom Mobile, you can do the same thing. But you need the premium version because we're gonna use local adjustments, in particular, radio filter. So let's get into it. All right, so we got the original image, but as we can see here, it's not really white. It's a little bit black. So how do we do this? Well, we just need to increase the brightness in these darker areas. So we go in develop mode, and then if you want, you can remove the saturation. So we are in black and white mode, and we just need to use radio filters in these areas or even brushes to make this looking uh, brighter. So now there are already some presets right here. I'm just gonna increase the dimension of this lighter. There you go. And then I'm gonna reset all the effects by double clicking on effects and increasing the exposure in this corner right here, but just need to invert it so that we are affecting only this part. There you go. And I'm gonna increase here. Now I'm gonna create a duplicate of this and then I'm gonna put it below the other one. That's it. And then I'm gonna create another one, duplicate on the other side. Very good. And if you want, you can also increase the shadows, which are supposed to be the black parts, but in this case, there are not many shadows. So I think we can keep it like this. And then we are gonna, again, duplicate this one. Boom, there you go, around his head. And again, duplicate another one and moving it here. There you go, and the result is already pretty much done. Now, if we want to refine our selection for the whites, we can always use a brush. Actually, you could have used the brush at the beginning, but I love rigid filters, so I just use them. There you go, now we go here, around, and make sure that everything is covered. Nice, there you go, and that's pretty much the result. Now you can play around, see the difference with the brushes, click O to activate the overlay and see what you are affecting. If you made any mistake, you can go here in Erase and cancel whatever you have done. We click O to remove the overlay, and that's pretty much the final result. Now let's have a look at the second example because I want to show you another trick that you can use. So in this case, we're gonna do the same thing, just remove the saturation at all and then use a rigid filter to increase the brightness 
and the exposure in this part. So we just need to invert them in this case. And there you go. And a little bit more, a little bit more. Now, the trick here is now because of my friend's skin color, we can use another tool to make it even better as a selection. And this is the range mask. So we're going to use luminance. And in this case, we're going to remove the shadows from the selection. So in this case, he's not really affected. Whereas if we increase the mask, then he's more affected, right? Okay, let, let me show you like this. So we remove from the shadows and there you go. As you can see, the red is becoming much softer in his skin and that's pretty good. That's exactly what we want, right? So we live it like this. There you go. And we're going to decrease the dimension of the filter. Then we click O to remove the overlay and this is perfect. We are just going to copy and paste this rigid filter somewhere else. And then we're going to do another copy. So we're going to put it here. There you go. And then where is the other one? Here. Very nice. Boom. That's it. If there are smaller parts, doesn't really matter. You can create another video filter. You can use the brush up to you. If you're using a new brush, always remember that we need to fix again the problem that we had before. So we're going to do a range mask, color, and then decrease the range, removing from the shadows. There you go. And then we need another one here. There you go. Very nice. Let's bump up the exposure like crazy. Very good. And decrease the range mask in luminance. Boom. Done. Much better. If we have any problem, as always, you just need to use the erase mask. So in this case, we did it too much here. So we're going to use here. The raised brush, sorry. Boom. There you go. And we're going to move it from the skin. And that's pretty much it. If it's still not perfect, just do another brush and increase the exposure. Bam. That's the final result. Super happy on how it turned out. If you enjoyed this first part, please take a moment to leave it a thumbs up and consider subscribing as it's free for you, but it really helps a lot. Now let's talk about the second way on how we create the same effect in a much quicker and easier way. And this is having a professional light with a softbox. What happens is that when you're using a softbox in the front, you have a diffuser. And the only thing that we need to do is just put the subject in front of the diffuser and then the light behind will be strong and will be even. And then in post-production, we won't need to do these local adjustments, which is pretty cool. Now, if you leave just one light behind and nothing in the front, I'm pretty sure you need to crank down the shutter speed in your camera quite a lot. So the best way is just to have a second light in front of the subject. And this can be placed in several ways, several different angles based on the effect that you want to achieve. Now you can do the same thing using an Amazon cheap softbox. So you just need to place it behind the subject as you're seeing in this video. And then by having a second light in the front, you'll be able to achieve the same kind of smoothness. But in this case, because the softbox is pretty small, then I could only take a part of the face and I couldn't really take a full portrait. The bigger the softbox, the more part of the body you'll be able to take. And this video instead, where I'm taking my own portraits, I was able to basically cut until the shoulders and maybe I could have done a little bit more. But as I'm going to show you right now, and the editing process is very easy also to increase the background and have a bigger photo. So maybe you can post it on Instagram on a vertical format or on a 101 format. Even when I was taking pictures of my friend was exactly the same concept. You have a very big software in the back and then with the long lens, in this case, I was using a 28 to 75 f 2.8 by Tamron set on 75 millimeter so pretty zoomed in lens but it's perfect for portrait because it creates a beautiful shape I was able to cut out basically his body into the softbox and therefore with the cropping in post-production the picture turned out pretty well but let's see how we can edit these professional photos using just Lightroom and as always you can do the same exact thing using Lightroom mobile so let's dive into it. The first one, we're going to edit my self portrait. First thing to do is decrease the saturation. Then we are going to crop in the image like so. Boom. Now, next thing that I want to do is try to increase the brightness of my face because for now is a little bit too dark. So we're going to invert this. And I think there you go. I like it like this. I don't want it too bright but I want to increase the highlights here. So we create a little bit more contrast, maybe the shadows slightly down, there you go, and the whites up. 
Boom. And I think this looks perfect. Now, the next thing that I want to do is increase the brightness of my eyes and the details as well. So I'm going to create a radial filter and my eye. There you go. Double click on effect to reset them all and increase the exposure with the invert function turned on. There you go. Increase the clarity and increase the sharpness. That looks pretty perfect. Nice. I'm just going to copy and paste this filter into the other eye. So when we are selecting the radio filter, we can just tap on this button right here to see the before and after with and without the radio filters. And this looks pretty good already. Now, one more thing that I want to do is create a radio filter on my whole face again. But this time I just want to affect my skin. And therefore I'm going to go in range mask, color and pick only this part of the face. And then I'm going to decrease the texture. And as you can see, now it looks like a little bit more smooth or here a little bit stronger. There you go. So we just need to decrease it a tiny bit. And that's pretty much it. So we go in before and this is the after. Not bad, right? Let's see a second photo with my friend. I'm just going to copy and paste the exact same settings that we did for me before. So here is a little bit too zoomed in. I'm going to zoom out using the cropping function. Bam, that looks pretty great, but it's a little bit too bright. So let's decrease the brightness a tiny bit. And we need to adjust these radial filters that we put before in the eyes in his eyes this time. There you go. I think we can increase a little bit the exposure because his eyes are a little bit darker. They're mine. So there you go. And that's pretty much it. Let's see if we need to adjust this mask. I think we can increase this, but decrease a tiny bit the highlights and this photo a little bit too much. And this one, I think it's fine. And this is the final result. So we got the before and then we got the after. If you prefer with the saturation, no problem. Just leave the saturation. Maybe you need to touch up a little bit the colors, but that's pretty much it. I like this picture a lot as well. As you can see in this second part, with the professional lighting and with the soft work in the back is a little bit easier. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're into this type of photography, you should definitely check out this video where I show you how to shoot and edit a black background photo. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!